Bangkok sits in the heart of the Chao Phraya River Delta. Caught between intensifying floods from rainfall and advancing seas, it's among the world's fastest sinking cities. Some neighborhoods have already slipped below sea level. Authorities working to save the metropolis face unique challenges. Right now, there's a lot of change, like shock and stress. So the globalization, climate change, and uh, urbanization. Supachai Tantakum is the chief resilience officer for the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, or BMA, the government agency that manages the capital. Bangkok is really flat. We don't have slope, so every, every flow we have to use a pipe because when it rains, the water just stays there. It won't go anywhere, so you have to use a pump, pump it out. The pipe runs to the canal, and we pump from the canal to the river because the water in the river is very high, so we have to close the gate. Every time we have to close the gate, and we use the pump, pump water from the canal to the river. And when we manage, we have to predict, forecast, okay, it's going, going to be rain, then we have to dry the canal to, to prepare some storage for the water from the rain. So this is the original plan of the Bangkok to protect. Taking that concept to new heights is landscape architect Kochakorn Vorakum. Her pioneering projects throughout Bangkok are designed to mitigate the effects of climate change on the city. Bangkok is a flat city and it's so hard for us to hold the water, right? It's a land that's flat so the water can go through and when the water moves, it creates so much canal. So we are dealing with a flat land. In the heart of Bangkok, Kocharkorn designed a trailblazing 11-acre park that can hold up to 1 million gallons of water, reducing the risk of flooding downtown. So the design of Chula Longkorn Centenary Park is tilting up the whole park and then restore all the runoff and the water at the end. So at the end would have the retention pond. It's equipped with the green roof, the wetland that clean up the runoff and then store in the retention pond. When the retention pond was filled up, it actually can flood the park up. So it's actually designed to flood. It's not designed to dry. <laughs> and I just feel that this is such an amphibious way of living of how Thai architecture or Thai landscape should be applied. We actually forget many of the traditional knowledge of how we used to live with seasonal change and live with water. So I just feel that as a designer, I want to shift that narrative. I want to shift that solution and perception. And it's not about trying to make Bangkok like in the past, like what we call Venice of the East. It's not about that, but it's actually about working to have the nature of Bangkok itself generate itself. Bangkok has been called Asia's least green city. As overdevelopment causes it to sink ever deeper, air pollution fuels climate change further, creating a dangerous cycle. And I'm actually was born and raised here in this city. And I remember very clearly that Bangkok used to be more green, more open space. After 30 plus years of urbanization, I think it's, it's become definitely more concrete, more buildings, more people. But I just feel that nowadays, being a child in the city is a little more difficult. Many of them living in the condominiums and more in the buildings and being deprived from, from the landscape of Bangkok. In the absence of free space, Kochakorn has found unorthodox ways to reintroduce nature into Bangkok. At Tamasat University, she's created Asia's largest rooftop farm. 
the 7,000 square meter space mimics rice terraces and helps curb the impact of climate change. As the great flood in 2011, when it's kind of called me out as a person, as a landscape architect, to really focus my life and my professional path to fix or to tackle this problem. And I feel that it's a time that we need to kind of reclaim that ability back and reclaim that in not just the mindset, but um, reclaim that into our infrastructure. I know that we have built something in such a wrong direction, but please don't continue. Please integrate the flexibility, the resiliency that this infrastructure is based on understanding the change rather than based on fear of getting wet. One of Kochakorn's biggest projects to date is a redesign of Lumpini Park, Bangkok's first public park. It could soon become the largest water sponge in the capital, helping to ease flooding. You can consider Rumpini, it is as important as the Central Park for New York, the High Park for London. Lumpini is the first public park for Thai people. And this big piece of green space in the middle of the city need to to fix itself or need to revitalize its, its own ecological health. Rumpini should be a public park that reflects how we are, how Bangkok is and was a city of water, the city of canal.